us back from doing what God says. Amen? Come on, am I talking to anybody tonight? And, 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 and what we're buying into is a lie from the enemy that's allowing our personality to not allow the fullness of God to rise up in us. Now, I'm not talking about our character. Okay? I'm not talking about our character. I'm not talking about our, our behavior and the words of our mouth and the desires of our heart coming into alignment with the Word of God. Right? So I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, you know, your character may not hold you back for some things. Meaning, if you're just a liar, that's a character issue, not a personality issue. Okay? That's, you just got bad character in that area. You get renewed in your mind in the Word of God and understand that God's not a liar. He's not a respecter of person. So our character needs to come into alignment with that character trait of God, and we begin to, to do that. Okay? I'm talking about a personality. I'm talking about an esteem of ourselves. I, I was even thinking about this, and I'm, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you in a minute. But I was thinking even about this concept of self-esteem. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe my esteem is in myself. I'm trying to deal with a self-esteem problem, and that's my problem. My esteem isn't in me. It's in the Lord in me. It's in what, who Jesus is in me. Because I'm not perfect. I've got mistakes. I've got issues. i got issues. Can you believe that? I have issues. I have anger issues sometimes. Anybody? I, no, don't raise your hand. I don't mean it like that. You're like, <laughs> it's just a preacher trick. He's like, anybody? No, God, no. So, I got this issue. And you're like, I do too. And I'm like, okay. I uh, wasn't really, that was, I'm sorry, you know. But y'all are so obedient. It was like, I do, I do, I do. You know? But I mean, if I was to sit here and have confession in front of you, some of you might leave and go, wow, I didn't realize that he was messed up. Man, he's got problems, man. And I could spend so much effort on my self-esteem, and I take out of the equation that it's God in me. That's hard to deal with, I know. Because the world preaches so much about self-esteem. And I'm not, please, I'm not trying to completely de-install positive, positive images of self. or that's, that's not my point. My point is this. As a believer, my primary identity is a son of God. I'm, I'm his son. And in him in me is the hope of my calling. And the life I now lead in the flesh is not mine, but it's his. So it's his identity, his esteem in me. That's the primary per per perspective that I should be pursuing because if I keep my eyes focused on me and the natural I'm always going to see problems I'm always going to see issues how many guys ever paint your house and um, one of the things they tell you is you got to have lots of light right because the light shows every imperfection right and if you ever start to really paint with one of those big big old industrial lights you see everything don't you you, you see totally everything. Now, you can look at that as, an, as a type and shadow, as an allegory of the fact, you know, the light shines in the darkness, and when the light shines, you see all the imperfections, right? But, and, and that works. That preaches a good message. Well, let me ask you this. Or, or, or let me testify to this. Let me ask you this. I'm going to testify that Jesus has never shown me anything in my life that was imperfect, that he didn't then immediately show me a promise where he accomplished that and did that and overcome that for me. So, so if all you are seeing is imperfections and you're not seeing the completed promise where God overcame that imperfection, then, then only part of the equation is working. Only part of the equation is working because the other neat thing is when you paint your house and you see all the imperfections and you call a professional, you know what a professional will come in and do? Show you exactly how to deal with whatever that imperfection is. And sometimes that imperfection means, listen, we got a, you got a, you got a real bad hole in the wall. You got a, your, your, your wall is totally uneven. You ever seen that happen, you know? You got a wall and you're looking at what in the world's going on? And the, and the guy comes in and goes, oh, I understand. Well, your foundation's all jacked up, man. Your wall's crooked and you got you to gotta deal with that. But a professional will come in and show you how to fix your problem, right? So... 
the Lord is the exact same way. If he's going to shine his big bright light on all your imperfections, he's not out there trying to shine his light on your imperfections just to put condemnation and shame upon you. He's shining his light upon you so that he can show you that he is greater than your imperfections. And, and his invitation in is for him to come in and say, listen, we can work on this. We can, we can deal with this. He's not like a building inspector. But they just come in, show your imperfections, and leave. And they're like, I hope you get it fixed. And I hope you get it fixed before I come back the next time. I mean, they are cruel. No offense. I mean, we love them in Jesus. But I'm saying the whole process, the whole process is pretty, pretty, pretty embarrassing and full of condemnation if you've ever done it. You know, you go in and you did your best. You did your best and they come and they're like, you suck. And there's like, and you stink and here's a check sheet and you better go fix it. And you better hurry up and figure out how to get it right. But Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus comes in and, and, and he shines his light to show us just how much that he can, anyway. Keep my point? 